And folks, I was going to say we are back, but technically I'm back. Travis is off doing things he has to do. XT Jones or T Jones. I always say the X because I'm a noob. And for all these years, I didn't know that people with the social media handles or their gamer tags, the X was a placeholder. I didn't know that. So I thought when people were like XXX Mayhem, Mayhem Lord 35, I thought their name was XXX Mayhem Lord 35. I didn't know their name was just Mayhem Lord. And that was the, the dang placeholder. I didn't know that. I had no freaking idea. And I'm just sitting there looking at it. So that's why I always bring it up because he gets mad when I do it. And shout out to you. I know you're pissed and you're frowning hearing this. Good stuff. So Adventures of the Black Nerds. Now, today is something super special. I've been doing, we've I and we've been doing a bunch of interviews. We've interviewed a graduate college professor. We interviewed an NFL star. We've interviewed, I'm calling him a star even though he ain't a star yet, but I'm calling him an NFL star. Uh, we've, and today, we are interviewing the owner of LA Creative, Mr. Chris Jackson. What up, what up? How y'all doing, man? I'm happy to be here, dude. Thank you, Baron, for bringing me on, bro. You know, I'm just so happy to have you, and my kids are trying to bust into my office. It's okay. <laughs> We're safe. We are secure from the chitlins. But I, what what makes me so happy to have you is I've known you since high school. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I, I've i seen your beautiful work in, what did they call it at King? Was it AV? It was yeah. It was uh, it was AV class audio visual. We did good day and okay. Yes, and yeah. I've been watching this dude handle the camera for years, and <laughs> I've been following his journey. Him and his whole collective, Conrad, just all you guys. It, it's it's made me so happy to know you guys to see you go from good day MLK to walking around campus with these big old dinosaur cameras to you guys <laughs> yeah, man, man to you guys are doing full on music video shoots yeah like artists yeah big shoots yeah yeah i mean i even seen a video where i don't know if you were technically interviewing jay-z but you were in the same area as jay-z yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah it was uh it was more like jay-z was doing a, i think it was like a press conference or something but it was still Jay Z. It was like you know we're like one of five people standing within ten feet of Jay Z. Like, that, all right, it's cool. No, and that's and that's what I'm saying. And I just I love bringing to light people's journeys, and mm -hmm. I love um, I love showing that everything has a beginning because everybody yeah. looks at what you're doing now and then they want to pick up an iPhone and jump straight to I want to yeah. do it. I want to do what LA Creative does. I don't know, the iPhone is pretty serious now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, people run whole careers off of they it. They run the whole I'm, thing. I've seen it. I'm <laughs> not knocking it, but there's something yeah. about the magic of yeah the full package, the works, the yeah. there's the a lot of understanding it. behind it. Yeah. Yes. It's not just anyone can go with iPhone to make it look great. You gotta yeah understand what, how to make a good image. Lighting, audio, mm -hmm. like levels, Everything. all of that. And I didn't start learning anything about that until I started doing this podcast stuff. And I'm sitting here looking at my levels like, why does it keep bouncing up and down? And then <laughs> Travis. <laughs> yeah. And then Travis will put out the qual the video. And I'm like, why do I sound so low? He was like, well, because I was recording at these levels and you were pumping out at this decibel and blah, 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 blah. We had to match it up yeah. as best as possible. And I sound like I'm mousing on the mic. And, uh, you know, yeah. it got me sounding all monotone. But. <laughs> First, first and foremost, just give everybody a quick rundown. What is LA Creative? So LA Creative is a full service production company and advertising agency. So we pretty much create videos for music artists, um, commercial companies, and uh, like nonprofit organizations. And we also advertise them. So we also find advertising avenues and do the distribution pretty much. So pretty much short form video content for anyone that needs that. That is dope. Can you give some examples? I don't know how, if you can, yeah, no, like totally. some companies. You um, well, we just did a uh, promotional commercial for a pretty large church out here in San, uh, San Fernando Valley. Okay. And so that is an example of kind of the nonprofit stuff we do. We just did a music video with Snoop Dogg 
Oh, I do remember that. Music video content we do. And we have a contract with Crown Castle, which is a telecommunications company. So Jeez. that's an example of the kind of professional commercial work we do. So I like create is literally dipped in several different industries and we just produce super high quality video. Bro, then how do we go from <laughs> how, okay, let's let's talk that. How do you go from A V club uh-huh. in high school to doing a music video for Snoop Dogg? How Well, you know, you know, it's a long story, a long interesting story. We should be on the podcast or something. It, right? <laughs> Man, it's almost podcast, like this is a perfect <laughs> platform. Man, Adventures no, of the Black but, um, Nerds is giving you this space. No, yeah, you... right? No, but uh, it, where, where did we start? Where did we start? Well, you know, honestly, I didn't get into it like a lot of people did. I wasn't like a super big movie nerd. Um, I wasn't a skate video guy. I played football with you. Yep. We were on the football team. Yes. I was JV, you were varsity. And uh, y'all niggas kept getting big. And, I <laughs> and I'm still growing, folks. Right? Yeah, yeah. I need like, to put the fork the down. <laughs> <laughs> the fork is heavy. <laughs> heavy is the fork that the big man bears. <laughs> See, and, uh, in football, though, at the time, y'all niggas were killing me, bro. So uh, I had to stop doing football, and I had to take that energy and put it elsewhere. And that's when the audio video thing came in. And I got into it, and it was like, oh, this is fun because no one could tell us anything in school. It was like, we had audio visual class, go out and film something. It was like, oh, I got to walk around all day long with the camera fucking around. They <laughs> legit were. Like, I'd be in class, and I'd look out the window, and they'd be walking around with their cameras, I swear. It was just always <laughs> yeah. on the go. And I'm like, what the heck? I got to come up with excuses to get out of class. And these yeah, dudes is just on the go. That's what it was, and we loved it. That first year I did it, and then my senior year we did it. It just turned into something crazy because we were on the actual TV for the school, and it broadcasted us to every classroom every Friday, and it was us fucking around in every classroom every Friday, and that's kind of where I think I first got a taste of the actual power involved in like media creation because it just we were like celebrities in high school. We were like. Yeah, parking in teachers' parking, <laughs> like for real. You know, yeah, doing everything. Like, all folks, he's not lying. I've seen, I've seen all of this. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. You know, so it was a cool little taste of like high school fame, and um, then we found out people got paid for it, and we were like, oh, fuck it, cool. You know, my dad is a plumber, so I always like was basing work off of like digging ditches, and I'm like, nigga, I don't have to dig ditches. I can get paid. I don't have to dig ditches. Cool, we're doing that. We're running. <laughs> Shout out to Mr. Jackson. He's the truth. Yeah, first, shout out to Jackson, man. He's, first man to introduce me to Chick-fil-A. I'm so <laughs> grateful for this family. They introduced me to Chick-fil-A. I don't even think we had a Chick-fil-A nearby when I was over there at, at this man's house. And like 8, 2007. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's no way Chick-fil-A was in, <laughs> in Southern California or this part of Southern California. So I just to see it, I'm like, what are these little beautiful biscuits? <laughs> what are with with chicken in the middle and there's honey and there's honey what what is this oh bro i'm so grateful to your family for a lot more than chick-fil-a but chick-fil-a no, is up there. Chick-fil-A's fine. <laughs> i do that every once in a while they just like have chick-fil-a days yep bro cool. chicken biscuits man, i'm telling you so <laughs> it just that like going from high school so what was your what was your first big like where you knew okay this will be everything um you know i don't know if it was like i knew this would be everything but my first big shoot was actually this video called um fuck what was it called it was for mary j blige was it mary j blige faith evans that's what it was faith evans damn there was a Faith Evans music video, and I was maybe my third year of college, and I was the director of photography, so I was pretty high up on the set. But um, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I'm like 20 years old, you know what I'm saying? Like, my neighbor happened to see me outside filming with Conrad. Uh, shout out Conrad. He's Con- the he he is jumped. the truth. And he saw Goose feathers. Like, Goose oh, feathers. <laughs> We're like, yeah. He's like, I'm a director. I got this Faith Evans, or this is a major, or Faith Evans thing coming up. And we're like, yeah, let's do it. So he thought we were a little bit more than we were. We thought we were a little bit more than we were. Shot this music video. It came out terrible. 
Uh, it's on YouTube now. You can look at the comments. Niggas roasted <laughs> it. Like, yeah, you did. I want to find out what was that fucking song called. I gotta. Uh, we gotta find it. I oh. think it was called "Dumb" by Faith Evans. Oh God! And uh, it got such terrible. Yeah, it's called "Dumb." It got <laughs> such terrible YouTube comments. It was like, it was like literally like my first big video, and I like failed flat out on my face. But um, I learned a lot. I learned a lot from the experience, and um, it inspired me to like keep doing it because it was like, yo, I did this. I just fucked up and did this. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what if we real? What if I knew what I was doing and I did this? And so from that point, I kind of humbled myself and um, and just started at the bottom on sets. You know what I mean? And um, I'm reading one of the comments. It says, it looked like they shot this on a potato. So that's just <laughs> an idea of how terrible it failed. The first time. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. But it, it humbled me and it had me. And I, and I was like, okay, let me start and really understand what I'm doing. So I started interning for all kinds of production companies, big production companies, and learned a lot. And I was at the bottom. So I'm fetching waters. I'm like picking up actors as talent. And I'm like, you know, the coffee guy, but I'm learning. And I did that for as long as I felt like I needed to do that. And then I moved on to assisting with camera, assisting with lights, and kind of just work my way around the whole thing. Uh, there's a Sun Shu quote, which talks about how the only way to win against an enemy is to surround your enemy. And so that's kind of what I did. I surrounded the idea of being a filmmaker, a director, a DP, all that. Let's pause and, for one second. One second. Let's let that yeah. let's let that sink in, folks. <laughs> no, because I think especially, okay, you're a rare scenario, especially for your age. Mm-hmm. I'm talking like I'm real old, but no, <laughs> people in our age range, we lived under that guise of you go to school, you get a great job, and you'll graduate, and you'll get that great job, and your life will be set. We were taught that, but not realizing the people telling us to go to school, you they work from the bottom. Yeah. Our people often in our generation have a hard time. Well, I'm not gonna work there. Why not? Get in the door. Yeah. Every everybody I know who's in your type of field are in a profession that's not like a doctor, not like you know anything. Yeah, not where like you're structured to. Do yes, this. anything that's in that type. I forget the word I'm looking for, but especially creative, anything yeah. in that profession, they all everybody has the same story. Oh, I was just volunteering for my school, and yeah. somebody came in and was like, "I need a staff," and they picked us up, and then they offered me another gig, and then after three gigs later, under the table, they offered me a slot because somebody quit. And everybody I know in this type of space. So, folks, please don't don't believe the hype. Start somewhere. Nobody just becomes manager of McDonald's. Believe me, they was flipping. They was cooking fries. Yeah, like, man, and it, it's a lot to learn from the bottom. Yeah, you can't, you can't fuck up. You're looking up. So you know what I mean. <laughs> Any mistake you make is like, all right. You know, someone has to tell you and learn about it. So it's great to start from the bottom. So I did, I'm sorry, I had to press that issue. Because yeah, no, I absolutely. I think that's a good point to make. So keep going. So you were interning and um, you did that until? Yeah, I interned until I got into other assistant positions. And uh, I did that for a long, long time. And then I just kind of pivoted away from that into the directing more. And that's kind of when I started LA Create with the idea that we're going to take full advantage and use of this media and not just make a really nice video, but also make a really nice video go viral. Mm. And that involves a whole operation in and of itself, which we executed (laughs) on a video that a lot of people saw. Yes. uh, (laughs) Say it one more time. Twin baby baby mamas. Give us the breakdown on that. So Twin Baby Mamas was a clip that went viral and it's actually a trailer for a documentary we're working on about a dude named Keon who has gotten two women pregnant, which in and of itself does not sound that amazing aside from the fact that two women are twin sisters. Identical. Um, Identical twin sisters. He is a walking future lyric. Yes. 
it's wildly entertaining. And it's like one of those people you gotta see to believe the situation. You gotta see the situation to believe it. And it's one thing I love about it is that it's so polarizing. You know what I mean? You have half people who legitimately hate this nigga's guts. <laughs> they want this nigga. You need to die, bro. Like, really, they're crazy about it. But then you have another half of the people who are like, you are an inspiration. Keep doing what you're doing. I'm here to support you. Everything. So it's just fun. I want to see this man on Oprah. He, he'll get there, bro. He'll get there. Hey. He also is a rapper. So in his music is great. It's see, great. See, I I absolutely the re okay. My uncle has this perfect saying: If you're crazy enough to do it, I'm crazy enough to watch. Yeah, I yeah. I want to see this. I yeah. I want this because <laughs> it's just the idea. How much how much of a silver tongue do you have to be to convince? Because <laughs> they're pregnant, like very close to in birth and date, right? Yeah, like due dates. Yeah, they're- right up on each other he actually both he had both twins already something you'll see guys in the documentary and um yeah they're they're great but they're also very close in age like super close like that how do you walk out of that without being murdered (laughs) you know the thing that you gotta think and consider too and it's interesting because i don't think there's anywhere you're gonna hear this opinion or take on it but one thing you have to remember he's from like south central la got you like deep in the hood got so you. the whole dynamic is different down there you know yeah. what i mean it's just a different dynamic and it's such a dynamic where people have a lot more personal freedom because everyone is not so caught up with like am i looking better than this person you know what i mean so the whole dynamic is just different you know where it's just a little bit more acceptable, I think, than, you know. And, and you know what's so dope that you bring that up? Black nerds as a whole, that that's being able to be so free that you don't, you don't care. And mm-hmm. not, and when I say don't care, it's not that you, you let yourself melt away, but it's just the fact that your driving force is truly not what another person who doesn't provide any way to you, they're, they're, their perception like that's yeah. not my fuel that's not my tackling fuel like i yeah. don't man what do they what are they gonna think like my mom i love her to death she doesn't like my hair long like this is the <laughs> longest my hair like i i haven't straightened it to see how long it is but yeah. she she does she would rather me be clean cut she's like yeah. what's gonna happen when you got to go on another interview because of course i still work a nine to five but yeah. i do i do the nine to five so i can do this folks yeah exactly folks you can follow your dreams and still pay your bills. Absolutely. You do not have to be a starving artist. You do not have to be a starving artist. Don't believe the hype. You just don't want to do the work. It, yeah. It yeah. Look, something's got to give. If I watch a whole season on Netflix, I didn't make five videos. Like, yeah. it, it really, it. I don't get mad at myself. I'm a big follower. Of your time is there. There you go. I'm a big mm-hmm. follower of Gary V. I love Gary V because he's the most honest person. I hate when yeah. you get people on TV or on social media. Do you want to make millions? Do you want to have this car? But they never show you their kids. They never show you their wife. You never yeah. see them with their family. But they show yeah. you the car. They show you the money. They show you the check they cash in. That shit and, fucked up. <laughs> no, but that's what I'm saying. But Gary yeah. V will tell you straight out. And this is why I follow him. I'm kind of off topic, but I follow him because he not like he's Jesus, but I I respect what he says and I take his advice because he says it straight. He was like, "Look, you can go be family man, but you can't be mad that your business is not skyrocketing." Just Absolutely. know, I remember seeing that actually. Yeah, yeah, he he was yeah. straight up. He was like, "Look, you can yeah. do that. You can go do the baseball games outside, hanging out with the kids and barbecuing and meeting up with your friends at the bar. You can do that." But you can't be mad that your business is not beating everybody else. Because there's exactly. somebody at home who all they do is sitting in front of their computer. Every day. You'll Every never day. you'll Every never day. beat that guy. Yeah. Or person. Yeah. You'll never beat him. And, and I've learned that and I've internalized it. So n- when I get to do what I'm doing, it makes it feel good. Like, yeah. this feels good. I'm so happy we're freaking <laughs> doing this, man. It's, yeah, it's yeah. awesome. You know, it's funny that you're doing a podcast because even growing up with you, it was like Baron is the funnest person to talk to. 
Like, <laughs> man, bitch, you gotta talk to a nigga that's gonna be like, all right, I gotta sit in this car ride to fucking uh, passing league with somebody, something, anything like that. It's like, oh yeah, man, that was cool. I had fun. Time. Bro, so that- I, I, thank you for that, man. And that it's funny. That's how we started. Me and Travis would always say, "Damn, we should have recorded that." Like we would be sitting at, we'll be sitting at Carl's Jr. And yeah. like, dang, we should have recorded that. It just yeah. always was in front of Fresh and Easy. Rest in peace. Yeah. Dang, we should have recorded that. Fresh and Easy need to come back to life like Toys R Us. Fresh and Easy was the best. Bro, Jeez, you know why they same. probably went out of business? Yeah. Because everybody just waited until all that stuff was about to be a day old. Because I know. No, what? They were no that, really probably, like, that probably wasn't it. But I know <laughs> I contributed to that. I would yeah. legit like hide drinks. Like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> they strawberry it's lemonade bad, bad, was God. <laughs> that was the best strawberry lemonade I've ever had in my life. And I would go in there and hide it. Like, oh, they ain't going to find that. And be like, wait, ain't this about to expire today? Like, <laughs> half off. Thank you, bro. Oh, God. Rest in peace, fresh and easy. But right. no, but it just, this is, for me, this is something that I've always wanted to do. And it feels right. And then, you know, you got inspirations out there like Joe Rogan. Um, yeah. you, there's a bunch of other podcasts that brilliant are Brilliant like, Idiots. Yeah. Oh, Brilliant Idiots. I barely got into them. I didn't oh, really? realize. Yeah. I didn't know Charlemagne had all that going, you know. And yeah. I'm like, this is genius. That nigga talks all day long. <laughs> yes. See, I aspire <laughs> to get to levels like that where people just want to hear my voice. Because I think I sound good. I think yeah, what I'm saying yeah. sounds smart. And I, you know what I love most about Charlemagne is his honesty. Like, yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it is, you can't, it reminds me of like, um, you just, you can't get on the person who is that honest. Yeah, exactly. You uh, or, unless you totally do, because I've heard of Charlemagne getting punched in the face. So yes. I feel like it's either you turn it up all the way or you're going to let it slide because it's you have like to. That, that true. You have to. They was <laughs> yeah. waiting on him in front of the studio. <laughs> they tried to the world star him. He took off like a track star, which I don't blame him. The fact that he got grief for that. Like, what was he supposed to do? Stand yeah, there and get beat the snot out of him? <laughs> How mad did he make them? <laughs> <laughs> you want to beat up a radio personality. Like, Jesus. Yeah, man. But that's the thing. That's what makes certain people fun because they roast and they go hard on the people with that. You want to see go hard on, you know what yes. I mean? Yes. I feel like Doctor Phil goes hard on niggas too. I watch Doctor Phil. Oh, he, man, he really, Yo. bro, he will have you like, how are you breathing right now? Like, <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah. Jesus, but that's what people want to see. Yeah, that's what we like to see for whatever reason. We find that entertaining. That's why I think those characters now, get ahead. Now, speaking on creatives and characters, do you have? When it comes to you shooting like commercials and music videos, how do you how do you decide what you're gonna do and what you're not gonna do? Or is it like free for all? Like, oh, you want it, we got it. Yeah, it is that because it's like at the end of the day for me, it's like if you want it and have the money for it, we got it. <laughs> and, <laughs> that puts me in crazy positions. Like we had to get a tiger one time, and I'm like two feet away from a tiger in my face growling, and it's just like, damn, <laughs> we need that. <laughs> Man, the things I do for cereal. No, <laughs> for, for groceries. <laughs> for real, though. <laughs> Look at this animal, this vicious animal on my face. It's like growling and shit. But, um, okay. yeah, that's how we do it pretty much. But honestly, too, everything is story and purpose driven. So, Got you. If you need it, that's what we're going to get when we make it. Okay, here's one question I've always wanted to ask because I know you shot music videos and I know oh. you shot hip hop and rap videos. All day early do morning. you check the guns before they point them at your camera no <laughs> that would be so rude <laughs> show me the clip yeah Look. show me the, i don't trust you enough show me the i feel like that would be rude a gun that's sacred to a man a man's gun bro hey i my heart i feel like cameramen need awards just for how many yeah, guns have been pointed in their face yeah like man. I, I, how many, you've had a, have you had a lot of guns on your shoot? All kind of guns. Guns that were like blatantly illegal in the middle of the street. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Like, like, that's a fully automatic gun. But that, bro, 
whenever I see a music video, I'm like, Jesus uh-huh. Christ, that cameraman for at least a good three hours minimum had guns yeah. in his face. Yeah, straight up. And like rowdy niggas too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It makes it sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm all I'm got him thinking like, wait a minute, maybe I should. Stop. <laughs> I want to know how many cameramen have been shot. <laughs> I hope not a lot. For just the sake of my people. <laughs> I hope not, Lord. Like, holy <laughs> shit. Okay, but it's like it's really like it. But you know, the thing about doing rap videos, which is fun in a sense, is because you're gonna see something so different. Yeah, because these are real drug dealers sometimes, sometimes, <laughs> and like real gangsters sometimes. Look, allegedly, know? allegedly, allegedly, yeah, allegedly yeah, they're yeah. real gangsters. We'll stick yeah, with that word. Yeah, with these dudes in the streets, and they're just like, you know, you see how they live by the gun, die by the gun lifestyle, and then you're like projecting it out to the internet, which is fun. Man, <laughs> I so I've never been on a shoot. At least I don't think I've been on a shoot with you. But I was I helped somebody because I had a location by my house. And the guy who shot my wedding, he was like, oh, hey, you said you live by this, this, and that. Can you take me over there? I was, I'm thinking, oh, it's no big deal. I grew up in this neighborhood. So yeah. I'm taking dudes from another neighborhood through my neighborhood to this spot to shoot a video just because it was perfect for their video. And uh-huh. I'm meeting people. I'm getting nothing but street names, like big whatever, yeah, little so-and-so. Gone. Yeah, like, and I'm like... Gone. I'm like, wait a minute, where am I at right now? And then I'm like, what am I, what am I doing here? People driving by all slow. I was like, hi, yeah. I'm waving. I'm like, oh, what am I? I was so out of my element, bro. I was like, what? I would, if I was on a camera crew, bro, I would legit need a vest that says video man. <laughs> like, like, look, like I'm in a green zone. Like I'm out yeah. there doing CNN <laughs> media. <laughs> <laughs> multi-pass multi-pass yeah, multi-pass <laughs> <laughs> bro dang so okay so i don't think i asked you what's what's been the coolest shoot you've had so far that's truly just stands out to you uh you know i was on a shoot with my man sam schneider he runs a company now called bad beard um nice. and we were shooting on horses and that was the coolest shoot to me because we're like it was one of those things where (laughs) it's like it's like with video world i never really worry about going on vacations because i feel like eventually it's going to come around i'm gonna be shooting somewhere and it's going to feel a lot like a vacation so i'm not worried about it and this is one of those shoots where we were like up in the mountains just riding horses and we had the camera on the horse because that's how we were getting the shot and so i was riding a horse all day and i was like dude this is fucking awesome great job (laughs) <laughs> see that man that dang that's dope yeah you know what actually i seen one of your ads uh it wasn't for not for it was for a fashion company that was dope is that where were you guys at uh which the one, one in, i want to say you were at the beach in the desert oh yeah it was for this fashion company it was it was that was uh this girl named Anjane who has a fashion company which is the name is fleeting me now but i want to say it was like Sahar or something. I'll look it up and let you know. But it was shout out to Janae. For her. Yeah, shout out her. And um we went to the desert. It looked like Arabia. Like if you see the video, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. It was like sand dunes for miles and miles. And then it's like the beach at sunset. And yeah, it was a cool shoot. We had to drive really far for that. <laughs> <laughs> so I gotta okay, with that, do you work that into because I like to send people into the like semi deep into your world like of yeah, what you yeah. do because people don't know like yeah. how do you how do, do you work that into your general cost or is yeah, that something that you in, okay and I, like i say we do whatever the client or the artist whatever they want if they can pay for it we're doing it and however they want it i mean we did a shy glizzy video just recently and it just came out um nice. and the day of shy glizzy yeah shout out shy glizzy hefe Day of, he gets there and he's like, oh, I don't want to be in this room. I need a trailer. So we had to, like, find a whole, like, you know, the celebrity trailers where yeah. like, they could, like, sleep. and all the shit. We had to go find that the day of. In, like, an hour, we had to get it down there. And we did it. And it cost a shitload of money because it was, like, super last minute. But whatever they want, we get. And it's kind of fun because the rules change when you have a shitload of money to throw a box. And so that's all 
That is so dope, bro. And what makes what makes it even more epic is this is you. This is your baby. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's like, great, yeah. dude, I'm I'm so damn proud of you, man. I'm all breaking character. Yeah, like man. for real. And I got I gotta say, it's all glory to God. It's not even on me. It's not even like it's my. This is God's work, and I fully, truly believe that because it's so random. Yeah. You know, your videos is so random. It's never like, it's not like I go to in and clock in and see what the assignment is. It's like people just hit me up. It's out of the blue. Like, hey, I want to do this video. I have this amount of money. Or, hey, I want to do So I attribute it all to God because it's too random for it not to be. There's months where I do not have my money. Man. And that, see, that is so nuts, man. Until the 30th. <laughs> Dang. Man. man. I... And that's that's something, and I'm just I'm just glad that you're grounded in your faith, and then you're in a way to where you're providing and you're able to provide. That is such a crucial crucial thing, and I love seeing people step out onto their own and do their own thing. Cause you could have easily went somewhere, especially with your resume, bro. Like it, it yeah. it's not even just your word. It's like oh, Google me, like. <laughs> Like, yeah. like, Google me, see my works. It speaks for itself. Like, yeah. man, a long way from AV Club. That's for damn. A sure. long way from AV Club. Yeah, and it's just it's 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 love. When you love what you do, you don't work a day. The fact it's a lie. But I work hard as fuck all the time. <laughs> but I love it, so it makes it easy. <laughs> it, that's and that's that's the true beauty of it all. Like if it. It doesn't like when you mess around. Like I know you have days where you'll look up and you just spent four hours at the computer. Oh, absolutely. Editing, like way more. Yeah, like eight hours. Of that, that shit. and just boom, when you lift your head up and it's dark. Like what? Yeah, yeah. And then you send it to a client. And they're like, ah, I want to change everything. Oh, oh <laughs> bro. bro, how does how does that work? How often do you oh, get somebody who was like, no, nah, I don't want none of that. Folks, we're running into technical difficulties. Let me see where we got going. Let me see. Hold on. Patience. Wait, we just had some technical glitches. I don't know if it's me. We're go we're gonna keep going though. The show must go on. Keep it rolling. The show. Must go on. <laughs> I don't know if it's my internet. I don't know what's going on. But whatever, we're gonna keep going. So, do you often have people who have to send stuff back? You have to send like. Um, they well, how it usually goes is um. Yeah, we do like revisions. So okay. we'll send you a first cut and then we go, we send you a first cut and you send us back some notes. Hey, I want to change this, I want to change that, whatever. We do revisions. We work with our clients and our artists to make sure the video that they're putting out is the best video, the best look for them with their full creative control. You know, at the end of the day, it's like these videos are for you guys. And so we want to make sure whoever is in control is in control, feels are in control, and feels like they can change and do what they want to do to make sure they put their best work. That is you know. so dope, man. Yeah. And then with our other content, our like streaming content, we just we really cater to the directors. We have a couple directors on our list and whatever they want they get. And that's kind of what we, we our motto is what we live by, you know. See, I dude, that is so dope you're in a space to be able to provide that type of service because I like okay, I've got so many different like ideas. And knowing that there's somebody out there that I can just be like, look, this is what I want to exist. What do we need to make it happen? Yeah, man. <laughs> and I like that. It, it just, it rattles my brain, dude. Like, yeah, I feel like we're dream makers. Like we bring dreams to the screen. It's like, we can't make this reality necessarily, but we can definitely make it so you can show somebody what you had in your head. No, because I want, I mean, I want folks to know the scope. Like you said, you Tigers, um, even when you started off, Faith Evans, uh, Snoop Dogg, um, working with nonprofit groups. Like, that. that is just so damn, like, just expansive, and it's across the, the board. Now, I have to ask, have you shot a movie? Have you shot a, have you shot a movie yet? Have you shot a movie? You know, I haven't shot a movie yet and it's funny because when i first started i used to work with these guys and when i first started all i wanted to do was shoot movies. I was like, oh man i can't wait till that one day i get selected to go on a movie set 
and I used to work with these guys, and they were older than me, and they were like, man, I don't want to fucking do a movie unless this, that, and the other happens. You know what I mean? They were being, like, real bougie and picky about it. And I was like, I don't know why they like that. And I shot a couple short films, and I shot one in particular in Ohio in the winter. Ooh. And it was so fucking cold. I'm coming from South Got some technical difficulties. Southern college jeans is as warm as we dress, you know? Yeah. And I got out there, everything like that. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we're kind of glitchy, but it's all you, good. Keep you, going. So, okay. So, yeah, so um, got to Ohio and uh, got a rude awakening as to how to dress for the cold. <laughs> Let me see. I'm going to lower my quality. One sec, folks. I'm just trying to get this set up to where we're not, because I want this to be fresh. And we keep rolling. I don't stop, guys. Can't stop, won't stop. <laughs> I, I love, man, what was it, Head of State with Chris Rock? Said, ah. He was like, thought I told you that we don't stop. Thought I told you that we don't stop. I stand by that. Because <laughs> cause truly, this is, this is what makes it, this is what lets you guys know it's all human and it's all doable. Like, yeah, I'm doing this, guys. Um, like anybody, I I love I love watching people follow their dreams. I love watching people see that light bulb turn on, and they're like, "Oh, I can do it too." Like there's there's never too much. We live in the world. Like there's never too many eyes. There's never <laughs> what's the word I'm looking for. There's never not enough traffic. Like I hate when people are like, "Oh, it's oversaturated." No, you just niche it down then. Like if yeah yeah find your exact interest yeah you know like come have. on man there's somebody out there who only loves watching cars get washed go do <laughs> videos on car washing like yeah bro whatever like, it is whatever product it is bring it to the market and the market will let you know if it sucks oh yeah <laughs> big time and don't don't try to what is it don't try to demand the supply supply the demand yeah <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, hell yeah like please like don't 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 make it too hard because it. It really isn't. Or you can just like do passion projects. Like I love passion yeah. projects. Yeah, but- absolutely. And I think I think that for each artist, I think we gotta find that balance in between our client products, our client work, and our passion work. All right, we're doing this for our spirit because this is why we started doing it. And you know It gets like five views. Like- <laughs> hey, no, I it's funny, I did a I did a video like that. I think it was like a cheesy video game review. And um, it was absolute crap. I'm still, I'm getting better at it. But, like, 10 people watched it, and I was so happy. Yeah, because it was, was your person, right? I was so happy. I was yeah. like, yes! Okay, <laughs> so I never got into film stuff, but I've always been big time into, uh, like, cinematography. I okay. freaking love, and then I, I die for wide shots, bro. Like yeah, why? Well done, wide shot, bro. Hardest shot to get, hardest, bro. And I respect it. Okay, did you watch that Power Rangers like gritty version that came out? <laughs> yeah, the real one. There was like the live, yes, like, the modern updated one. Yes. Yeah. Did you see that wide shot when Tommy was holding uh the Pink Ranger in the middle of the battlefield, and it was like it was a split freaking second. I paused uh-huh. it. I was like, that is the most beautiful thing i've shot ever. ever seen and i'm just nerding out over that one scene and it was the yeah. way that director blended it in it started off he ran into the pink ranger and he was like who are you and she was like i'm the pink ranger or whatever her name was i can't believe i forgot it i call myself a black nerd and it's killing me um um i was gonna say emily but it's not emily it's gonna kimberly? kill me kimberly uh, he Is was like, Kimberly? yeah, it's Kimberly. And he was like, you're not Kimberly. Uh, who are you? She was like, I'm Kimberly. And then it cut to that scene where she's freaking dying in his hands. And it <laughs> booms out wide. And then it cuts right back to them talking. He was like, she's dead. And I was like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> like, oh! My eyes were like, no! <laughs> like, <laughs> but no, I love, so watching, I and you know what's brought it on for me? was this one art history class that I had to take through concurrent enrollment at uh-huh. RCC because I took avid and football at the same time. So I, okay. I'm i thinking I'm doing the right thing, folks. I'm going to school. I'm playing sports. I'm an avid 
advanced via individual determination, whatever it stands for. And I'm thinking I'm doing the right thing. And then they got the nerve to tell me my senior year, oh, you're not going to be able to get into a university or my junior year. You're not going to be able to get into a university because you don't have the credits, the qualifying classes. And I was Jeez. like, but I'm taking the stuff y'all. Wait, what? So Dude, I had to go. To do. So I had to go to class after school at RCC and um, Doctor uh, Professor or Mr. Ramirez. Art history. We looked at everything from building structures to Blade Runner. Um, every it changed everything for me. Just one little RCC class. And it's interesting because it probably wasn't something you would have taken. Never had you not been forced to take it. Never. That's how it always is. Yep. You're always the most influential classes. Yeah. I had to uh, take a religious studies class in college. Those are always dope and classes. That, yeah. And I was the first, I was like, oh gosh, it's going to be whack. But I got into it and it was my minor. It turned into my minor. Cause I was like, this is the most fascinating story filled thing that I could get into aside from movies. <laughs> yeah. All the time. That's what I tell people. I was like, if you want to see a great story, go pick up any religious text. Any. Yeah. Of any. Like, just go Way grab one. better than anything made today. Yeah, just out of down. pure, like, look, they worked on it harder. Yeah. Man, and then the fact that it held up so well that people For wanted thousands. to tell it over and over and over and rewrite it to modern times. And then, yeah. like, with the Terminated. Bible. Terminated. Yeah. Did you see, I want to say, like, maybe 10 years ago. Uh, wow, we're old. Uh, maybe 10 years ago, the uh, a bunch of actors got together and read the Bible. Like, I think, like, Samuel Jackson was like, God, Whoa, yes, yes, I swear to God, there's a, a reading of the King James Version. I hand to God, and it's got everybody from Samuel Jackson. Um, I want to say it's got the Allstate dude, um, Angela oh, Bassett. Every good black voice out there. Yes, all the great voices. Right now. Yeah, Samuel it, Jackson is like, yes. I feel like I was raised on him. Oh, bro, he... <laughs> You know what makes him so pure is the level of umph that comes with his cuss words. <laughs> exactly. It's the umph, <laughs> the spirit of it. Like you you seriously like I feel it when that man says motherfucker like when he says it it resonates like yes like I'm angry with you. I think everyone has felt a motherfucker just like Samuel Jackson said. Man. Like at one point in their life you have felt like saying motherfucker the exact way Samuel Jackson said. Man, I we <laughs> I just that that and Denzel Washington, the my nigga in training oh, day. Oh man. Another classic, like you just you instantly know. want to dab somebody up. Instant soon as he <laughs> said, like, that's what I um, top. Like, how did you re and you know what? He actually talked about something. It was a clip that went viral not too long ago. They were doing an interview for fences. And uh -huh. And somebody was like, oh, uh, the guy asked him, why was it important to have a black director? And I'm paraphrasing. Yeah. But along the lines, he said, it's not race. It's not, uh, what did he say? It's not color. It's culture. He was like, yeah. and then, you know, it's all black cast for that movie. They're like, we know how it smells to um, on a Sunday morning when your sister's getting her hair hot combed. Yeah. Like, you, you know, that's something... Like the nuance, the, the nuance. nuance, the little yeah. like you can't you can't portray that any nobody else could have said that like him. Yeah, you know, and that's why if you watch, there's certain there's some American films that are kind of big that are directed by foreigners. Um, most notably, uh, there was this movie about a train. It was a Korean movie, but it starred Americans. And they were like these people were like trapped on a train in the future. It was pretty big. I forgot what it was called, but oh, Snowpiercer, it, Snowpiercer, yeah, Snowpiercer. Film I don't know, guy, bro. <laughs> I'm gonna say, I'm gonna this up. Someone has to get this. Phil, hey, I'm a movie junkie. Yeah, but okay, so Snowpiercer, I thought Snowpiercer lacked nuance. It lacked it American nuance. It did. It, it know, was it stripped of everything. Of yeah, exactly. There was no culture exactly. to it. Now, mm -hmm. a part of me honestly believed they were trying to create that environment of no culture because life now became the train. Yes, but you know what's even creepier about that movie? Somebody made a tie-in that the dude who ran the train was related to Willy Wonka. <laughs> See, I don't fucking know. <laughs> but no, and I was like, nah, get out of here. But they yeah. went through all the different stuff, crazy way of making edible food out of everything. Remember, yeah, they were eating crickets. 
and then uh the, the the cricket jelly bars but then like yeah. the dystopian up and down as they went through levels it got weirder and weirder but the final piece that really made me believe that this was some type of post Willy Wonka world was the small space where kids spoiler alert it's on Netflix yeah. you should have been yeah. watched it no kids yeah yeah you should have been watched it. it's a great movie um the space where they had to force kids to work to keep the train moving uh huh that would have been the Oompa Loompas, but they died off. And that's that why they started to have crazy. kids. You know, I don't put anything <laughs> past the Biden. When no. you're sitting there in a room just making shit, it happens yeah, like that. it happens. Like, that's come on. Yeah, when I seen that, because the dude, I when he first said I was like, bullshit, get out of here. Yeah. But then it he started hitting. Hit, more, doesn't it? He start, yeah, he started hitting some notes, and I was like, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you know, um, my favorite one of those is the, um, the alternate story that Jar Jar Binks is the ultimate bad guy in the Star Wars series. Jar Jar that Binks is, is supposed to be the ultimate Rick. Sith Lord. Yeah, but Jar Jar Binks is a Sith Lord. That is my favorite one. Ever. It has to be. It makes so much sense. Well, let's let's jump on that. Let's for those who don't know. Wow, we wow. I got a. I call myself a black nerd, and I do a black <laughs> nerd podcast. I don't think I've ever had a Star Wars conversation. Oh my god. Well, While that is the one worth having. Is we're Jar Jar doing Binks this. And then shout out to the actor who played Jar Jar Binks. That man black. almost committed suicide because of how much hell he was getting for playing that role. They, yeah. ruined, they like, ruined that man's life. Oh, did they really? Wow. Yes. Yeah. Because, because fan fanboys. Because they didn't like him or they thought he was... Yeah, like because they didn't like Jar Jar Binks. Well, let's, let's touch on major thing, major tropes that happen in Star Wars. There's yeah. always a funny looking, weird, obscure alien who ends up being the truth. Yeah, yeah. And if you go back and notice, folks, when he's in Gungan, I believe that's what his city is called under the water. When he's down there, people are afraid of him, not yeah, shunning yeah. him. There's a difference between you don't you're not afraid of the jester. You're not afraid of the class clown or the yeah. idiot. You laugh at him. The people who seen him were absolutely terrified of this man. Then you take to the fact that how do you go from village idiot to Apparently, walking with Palpatine? With yeah. walking with Palpatine, giving him advice. That is in the films. He's walking in the Senate, and he's on the Senate. He's run, he's yeah. leading the Senate, the Galactic yeah. Senate. You go from village idiot, <laughs> Apparently, air quotes, yeah. allegedly. <laughs> like to walking with the next emperor yeah. giving him advice he was supposed to be that guy it would have made yeah, the story way better and I, it would have made it so much better it would have been such a great twist but uh, I get Fan it boys. Millions, millions of dollars just yeah. from that and blah 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 I would love to have seen it play out like that because I think that's how they set it up oh they did they, they had yeah. it come on and then the dude was doing force jumps the guy was beating whole clone trooper armies by tripping yeah, and falling, well, looking like drunken master. Like, yeah, boy. <laughs> come on. Get. And it was fun as hell to watch. It was yes. Like, oh, Your entertaining character. What would we say? Yeah. What was it? Ziza la la quiza. <laughs> jar jar. <laughs> like, bro, it was, it was greatness. And they, it really led up to that magical point, and I truly believe he was supposed to be the ultimate bad guy. And they, the fans, you know, but at the same time, no, they're not a small industry. No, I'm not giving Lucasfilms any breaks. You're, you're, you already had money. You already paid. People were gonna see regardless of what you came out with. You should have just this ran with fact. it. Yeah, this is fact. Should have just with it. It's hard when the guy who's cutting those checks because we think it's Lucas. Everyone thinks, oh, Lucas is the end all be all. But at the end of the day, there's somebody else. Yeah. No one knows who's like, here's a million and two million dollars for just the editing. Here you go. Here's the check. Man. And I think it's like, when you got those guys bitching at you, it makes it a little different. But I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you know, and I'm, I'm happy you said that because I always make the joke. And I say it as a joke because we're getting down to the final minutes. But it's not a joke. I can't wait to sell out, bro. I always like like what do I got here that I can like uh oh dropping stuff. Oh uh, Southern's Grove Mountain Trail Mix. Um Hey, there you go, the, see. The Mountain Trail Mix. It's delicious. It gives me the energy I need to shoot podcasts and work here with LA Creative. 
Bro, I can't there wait. Is. I'm gonna holler at my man. Bro, I can't wait. I've drank squirt on camera. I'm, <laughs> I'm cracking open root beers. Like, ah, oh, delicious. It's so happen, refreshing. Bro. That's what they, oh, yeah. they have whole departments for giving people money yeah. to to be like, hey, I'm drinking this. Look, bam. I got. The, I'll I'll make sure to hit the right angle. Like, boom, bam. <laughs> I can't wait. Be walking around here, man. I'm thirsty. Somebody give me a sprite. I'll do it all mid podcast every episode. <laughs> like, <laughs> damn, bro. Actually, it's interesting you say that. I had a video that I did with the, this artist, Cash Money AP in Polo G, which is actually in no cap, which is actually my biggest video to date. I think it has like three or four million views. Jeez. And yeah, it's intense. And they hit me recently. They wanted a new version without the storyline. Very, uh, it was a very interesting storyline to it. It was about, and you should see the video to really watch it, but it, the storyline basically was like showing you what happens when you're actually a gangster. When you're like gotcha. robbing people and you're in these streets and you're selling drugs, the end, the character gets arrested and it fucking sucks. And everyone's like, oh, sad because he got arrested. And that was the story. But they wanted a TV version and they uh, wanted to story cut out. They wanted all that arresting, the police and all that cut out. How and did you do it? I don't give a fuck. I mean, my thing is this. It had three or four million views on YouTube already, how it was supposed to be. Gotcha. So whoever's going to see it, whoever's supposed to see it is going to see it the way they're supposed to see it. Gotcha. Everyone else is going to see it the way you're supposed to see it. I, to me, it's all out of my hand anyway. But it's an interesting note of selling out because I did feel a little bit like, ooh, uh, I'm taking the meat off this sandwich. You know yeah, I mean? like you did all that work, all the beauty of it. Yeah. And, man. I'm take the meat off. Oh, it's for a vegan. Oh. Yeah, like, oh, they want a hamburger with no patty. Oh. <laughs> you want a protein style? Oh, oh. Sure. <laughs> so it's not a burger. Well, it is. It's like, <laughs> it's not. Like, it's I don't, not. you know, I don't blame people. Just call it what it is. Don't call yeah, it what it ain't. Salad. It's not wrong with a hand salad. <laughs> salad. Yeah, you just want a uh, salad to go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, you, want a, you want a lettuce roll. Like, yeah, exactly, <laughs> and that's fine. Do you. That's all good. Eat and be merry. Um, <laughs> but see that that is so dope, man. So what? While we're getting ready, we're hitting the final minutes. What video do you want people to? Where do you want people to check you out at? Check my website out. It's moneyshotchris.com. Again, mm-hmm. that is moneyshotchris.com. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at moneyshotchris. And, um, yeah, check out my work. Check me out. I'm going to have a lot of cool projects dropping later this year. Uh, always doing cool music videos. Always doing cool commercials. But stay tuned for the narrative stuff. Twin Baby Mamas being one of them. Uh, I'm gonna so drop excited it. for that. Yeah, later this year. It's, it's, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be um, on Vimeo Pay. It's going to be like a dollar. So nice. it's going to be a 430-minute episode. It's going to be worth it. You're going to check it out. I'm talking talk about. About. It's gonna be cool. Bro. Folks, man, look, Chris, thank you so much for doing this, man. Thank you, man, for bringing me on, man. This is amazing. The hour went quick. We had yeah. some technical difficulties, but we rolled through. Chris Jackson, Money Shot Chris, LA Creative. Y'all, everything is there for you. The man can make it happen. I, like he said, tigers, guns, boats, deserts, beaches. You want it, he's got it. Or at yeah. least he can get you there for a fee. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. If you're great at something, don't do it for free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Baron J67. Check out all the links below. We'll make sure to have his links there. And shout out to Tone Deaf Network. Thank you guys for blasting us across the universe, getting us all the way from this coast to that coast to across the seas. And then I feel like aliens are listening to our stuff, and I'm grateful. Um, Spreaker, Spotify, iTunes. YouTube, and anywhere else you guys hear your favorite podcast, Adventures of Black Nerds, we are out.